Um, welcome. I'm Kenny Furlong. I'm the sheriff of Carson City. Uh, I grew up here in this community. I love this town. Dream of someday becoming the sheriff here in Carson. Um, I graduated uh, from Carson High School in 1975. Carson City is a great place to live. Um, geographically, we're, we're settled uh, just on the side of the Sierras. We have Lake Tahoe for uh, uh, over on our west side. Um, round the year entertainment, snow skiing, water skiing, uh, all of those opportunities. On the east side, um, uh, the desert environments, uh, a lot of outdoor activity exists right here come down off those fringes and you're down into that community of about 55,000 people. Very family, white picket fence, career, um, just a wonderful town to live in. Everybody knows everybody or is related to somebody who knows somebody. This is uh, an environment where you can, as, as, a, as an adult or as a mother and father, raise your children in an environment that you can feel relatively safe in. In Carson City, the Sheriff's Office employs about 101 sworn officers. Um, those are broken into different areas of responsibility in the organization. We have 40 plus civilians. Those are people who do many of the functions that the officers do, but don't need that um, uh, uh, law enforcement trained certification capacity. Uh, they support us through our uh, dispatch centers, uh, our records and civil divisions, um, forensics, uh, uh, quite a few different positions within the department to support all of the function that we do. And then on top of all of that, we have a number of volunteer organizations youth organizations all the way up to senior uh, senior citizens, if you will, organizations that support us every day. Look, a career here in law enforcement is broken up into several different categories. Um, once a person is certified as an officer, is trained and, and on his own, he's going to see a typical day. He's going to come, he or she is going to come to work. Um, uh, first, the first step in is donning all of your uniform requirements, getting ready for work. Um, right now, uh, we allow time for physical fitness opportunities while you're getting ready. Um, and then you're going to hit the briefing. We have three briefings a day for the different uh, uh, divisions of the department. We have civilian briefings such as in our comm center, detention briefings for over at the jail, patrol briefings on the, on the uh, uh, patrol side, and then everybody's going to go about their business for the day. Um, we work for tens because it does provide for an overlap in, in our shift uh, responsibilities. That way we can schedule in time to get reports and things tidy up at the end of your day while we still maintain enough folks uh, to be out on patrol and, and overseeing our, our responsibilities. Typically, you'll see a, 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 on the average in a department such as ours, you'll see a deputy making somewhere in the vicinity of sixty to eighty thousand dollars a year. It's a fun job. It has all, all sorts of opportunities. When you when you enter into an occupation such as as law enforcement, um, it's very often described as somewhat of a paramilitary style of structure. We have our deputies or our police officers. Uh, you have your sergeants who are supervisors of those who are doing, let's, let's face it, the most of the work. Those sergeant supervisors are on 24 hours a day all over this community to make sure that somebody is overseeing all of the activities. Each of our divisions, and we have about six of them here, is led by a manager on the sworn side. Those would be lieutenants and captains over our patrol divisions, our investigations, uh, our detention operations. And then as you progress through, if, you're, if you so desire to climb that ladder in your career, uh, the Sheriff's Administration uh, is staffed with sworn officers that oversee all of the department's functions. Within, within, the, within the organization of the Sheriff's Office, uh, and probably more important because this is where many people's interests lie, are the functional responsibilities of law enforcement. We see a police car and we see an officer in it or a deputy in it and we think one thing. The fact of the matter is there are so many different opportunities within an organization such as Carson has. Uh, canine handler responsibilities, mental health 
uh, responsibilities. We have officers that ride with com clinicians that tend to people who are in crisis in our community. Uh, we have investigators, um, uh, school resource officers. We have proactive enforcement that targets uh, uh, crime so that we can prevent future crime on down the road. That's primarily known as our special enforcement teams who can do absolutely anything. They, uh, their major focus is narcotics and drugs, uh, but they do everything from drug uh, investigations all the way to presidential detail protection. They do it all. <laughs> we, um, we often talk to applicants or people who want to become come into this uh, career field, and we talk about those minimum requirements. 18 years, or excuse me, 21 years of age, um, graduated or a GED certificate from high school. Those are minimum requirements, and I think that it's well to understand that those are minimum requirements, and that the career field is very competitive. Um, we find people that have experience through our cadet programs, through volunteerism, uh, with other types of let's call it law enforcement type of activities. Um, they have, uh, they're older than 21, so there's some maturity on their side. And they have some college uh, um, uh, studies behind them. Uh, our typical applicant is coming to us with associate's degrees, um, uh, either in a social studies type of environment or a criminal justice environment. Typically, they are in their early 20s, um, it's challenging at that minimum 21 years of age, um, and and but they they these folks have gotten involved and engaged. We also have a reserve component of our organization where we encourage many people who are considering a, a career in law enforcement to get on board right now uh, as a reserve and start experiencing and working side by side with officers and what we do inside this community. Some of the goals that I had, um, and I'm dating myself back a few years, is an engagement in this community with the law enforcement organization and that we are actually a part of our kids' development in schools, um, the activities that go on inside the community, all of these prosperous things for our future. We've always wanted that. Um, law enforcement is faced with challenges every single day. And while our memories are short, we know what happened last week and the week before and this past year, law enforcement is an ever evolving challenge. We operate by laws that are changed frequently. We operate by interpretations of those laws through our court systems. And, and, and I would suggest to you that one of the biggest challenges is keeping a balanced officer who is well-educated on the outside of his career, he's well educated on the inside of his career, and that he balances both of those with strong family ties and, and um, hobbies and activities. It's a lot. But, and once you enter the law enforcement community, your job is just begun. Your education will continue for the rest of your career, and the public expects that you are on top of those changes that of, of everything that is taking place as our societies evolve. Um, when we talk about challenges to a law enforcement career, um, no two days are going to be the same. No two hours are going to be the same and no two calls for service are going to be the same. But one of the biggest challenges is the volume of that. And so we encourage people with a career in law enforcement to get away from, at times, that negative side of the ugliness of society. Nothing is going to be the same, but it's very easy to fall into a rut, if you will, because every single day, every single call is negative. Why do people call the police? Because something is wrong. And they ask for that officer to bring some restoration of normalcy to their lives, and then the next call comes in. And, and so one of the biggest challenges is to fight that everything I see for the next 10 hours is negative. What kids do not understand is while they're in school, they are writing their resume for the future. It's not just that you graduated. It's what you did in school. How well you did it. What did you, how did you participate? What types of activities do you engage in? Every day of a student's life 
You are building your resume. It's never too early to start that resume. Set aside high school, things that you do in middle school, things that you've participated in the community, all of your activities are building that resume even before you graduate. In closing, I want to invite every student to enjoy everything that they ever hoped for in life, including coming back here. Uh, we view the high school um, uh, citizens academy that we run every single year out of the sheriff's department is one of those big connections. If you want to see more, come and sign up for the Citizens Academy. We do it every winter uh, and it's restricted for high school seniors so that you can get a really good brush of all of the different opportunities and where you can land your dreams. And I, I, I just cannot encourage kids enough to open their eyes. The, the field of law enforcement is much, much greater than you've ever imagined. Hi there, my name is Matt Smith and I'm a sergeant with the Car City Sheriff's Office. I've currently been with the Sheriff's Office for about 16 years now and currently I'm a sergeant over the School Resource Officer Program. One of my functions as a sergeant over the School Resource Officer Program is having the Cadet Explorers and I supervise that unit. The Cadet Explorers is a great opportunity for young candidates, young uh, kids who have an interest in law enforcement. And what we do with the program is we tailor it to uh, giving these kids a glimpse of what life is like in the law enforcement community. And it's not just only for uh, kids who want to have an active interest in the street program or being a street officer or even a jail officer. It's also tailored so you can actually get a little bit of you know, a heads up as to what juvenile services, a juvenile probation program is like, or even adult probation is like. So it's tailor made for giving a glimpse and really giving that opportunity for uh, the kids to really understand and um, get some training in those programs. I transitioned from being a cadet explorer into transitioning into a full time peace officer. So it, our cadets, they meet every Monday. Uh, every day, every Monday of the week, so they meet quite often, and every week we offer different trainings as to, could be this week we could be doing high-risk stops, could be this week interviewing you know, procedures, and we could be doing this next week, maybe doing building search. Uh, they do have the opportunity, after going through some of the trainings and kind of showing that they are mature enough, we do offer them the op opportunity to do ride-alongs with our deputies out here on the street. Okay. So I'm Deputy Nick Simpson. I work for the Carson City Sheriff's Office. I'm currently assigned to the Patrol Division K-9 team. I've been assigned to patrol for about five years and I'm approaching my first year assigned uh, to the K-9 team in March. Um, my partner is K-9 Ben, who can smell the uh, heroin that we've placed up there and doesn't want to walk away from it. but. My partner is K9 Ben. He's a three year old Belgian Malinois. He is trained and certified in drug detection, suspect apprehension, and he can also track individuals. Uh, the narcotic odors that he's certified on are heroin, methamphetamine, and cocaine. Um, yeah, he just doesn't want to come off of it. Um, I got into law enforcement, it was probably my junior year of high school. Um, I started taking an interest in it and I, I spoke with my English teacher, I can't remember her name, but she suggested to me that I do a ride along. And so I went down to the, the Sheriff's Office in Washoe County. Um, I had to bring my, my father with me since I was a, a juvenile at the time and sign the paperwork to do a ride along. Since I did a ride along, I did one ride along and I was hooked. I knew that this was the job that I wanted. Uh, my name is Sarah Johnson, Communications Manager with the Carson City Sheriff's Department. Our department currently works 12-hour shifts, so employees will work either 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., which is the night shift, or 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., which is the day shift. It takes that special person that, you know, wants to come in and, um, and make this a career, you know, that hops out at um, 
59,000, and that's just to be an operator of employees that did apply right out of high school and um, are still currently on the job, which is great. I have 18, currently 18 employees. Okay. Um, I, that consists of, at the moment, I have six shift super, it's, I'm the manager, I have six supervisors, three on day shift, three on night shift. Um, some of the skills that it takes to be a communications operator. Um, customer service is a plus. We look to have at least one year of customer service. So what it takes to be a dispatcher, there's some good qualities. We talked about multitasking. Um, it's also uh, customer service, multitasking. Um, being able to stay calm in you know, scary situations, a dispatcher can never know what you're gonna get. Every day is different. The awesome thing that I can say at the end of the day is I did that. Uh, my name is Lieutenant Earl Mays. I've been here at the Sheriff's Office for, gosh, next month will be 22 years. I started my career in um, way back in the early 90s, believe it or not, in, as a Reno police explorer. So I was involved in the Explorer program, which, which is kind of nice because the Sheriff's Office here in Carson City offers that opportunity. We do have an Explorer program for kids to get involved in. Um, after that, I did time on our motor unit. Um, I was promoted to sergeant and I managed the, the traffic motor team. Which was a lot of fun. That was probably one of my, my favorite assignments was being on motors. And then um, shortly after that, I took a position with the school resource officers and was the supervisor of the school resource officers and I was assigned to the high school. And I did that just, just a year, uh, one school year, and then um, I got promoted to lieutenant. And um, I am the lieutenant manager over at our jail. And I manage roughly right now because of the pandemic, we only have about 130 inmates in the jail, which is pretty low because typically on a normal year, we're up in the 200s. Um, I have five sergeants currently underneath me and 23 deputies that work inside the jail and four support specialists. And what they do is they, they uh, they're civilians that work in the jail and they work our booking counter and then they assist the deputies in, in processing new inmates that come, come through our door. A, a, the best move that I've ever made in my life. This, I love this job. I love this department. Um, it's, it's rewarding. It's, again, for somebody that didn't go to college and have a college degree and to move up the ranks and um, to be able to do the things that I've done, I'm, I'm pretty fortunate. Um, my name is uh, Brett Bindley. I'm a detective with the Carson City Sheriff's Office. Uh, I've been with the Sheriff's Office since 2003. Uh, I got my start here at the Sheriff's Office uh, being an Explorer Cadet. And the Explorer program is basically a program where you volunteer for the Sheriff's Office and you do intern work uh, where you can ride with deputies, learn the professional law enforcement, and it's a good way to get your foot in the door, kind of get your face out there to where I'm. So I went to the police academy uh, in early 2008, and I went to the Western Nevada uh, State Peace Officer Academy at Western Nevada College. That program is no longer around, but there are similar programs like it still in Nevada. Uh, I graduated that program in August of 2008 um, as the valedictorian, and I was hired by our office uh, in August of 2008. Uh, I got sworn in as a deputy sheriff and I started work in detention. Uh, I was different. Uh, I'd say maybe a third of our agency, we hire people that they either came from college or they came from the military. It was backwards for me. I came here first as a civilian, a volunteer, and a deputy. I used benefits that the city provided me to get uh, two college degrees while I worked here. Um, I have an associate's degree in criminal justice and I have a bachelor's degree in emergency management and homeland security. And there is a, uh, a contract benefit where the city agrees that as long as I work here and it's in a related field to law enforcement, they will pay to help uh, offset tuition and books. And that's why I was able to obtain two college degrees while I worked here. Uh, in order to get access to all this though, there is a 
in-depth hiring process. Uh, not just anybody walking off the street can just put on the badge, put on the shirt, and say they're a deputy sheriff here. Uh, it's a uh, eight-step process. You have to put in an application with the city, which they ask for just basic uh, information about who you are, where you live, where you worked, um, where you went to school, if you were in the military, what was your experiences there, and that gets forwarded to the hiring director at the agency uh, who screens that and sees if you have suitable characteristics or experience that would be valuable to the agency. Um, once that evaluation is done, they start moving you through the evaluations process uh, and it includes an invitation to a written exam. And during the written exam, uh, it's a multiple choice or a true false uh, written test where they evaluate your communication skills, any prior knowledge of law enforcement, uh, interpersonal skills, intrapersonal skills to determine if you're a good fit and do you have the academic ability to work here. Uh, you can you get invited to the physical fitness test um, where you are subject to Nevada post or peace officer standards and training standards on um, completing a certain number of push-ups, sit-ups, doing an agility run, doing a jump, um, and then running a, a mile and a half and a 300 meter sprint and all of those uh, where you're asked to do certain uh, physical attributes to include push-ups, sit-ups, uh, a jump, uh, a run, and it all has to be within a certain period of time in order uh, to meet the state standards. And you have to pass that test in order to get on, um, A, with the Sheriff's Department and also start your academy training. Uh, you're subjected to a background investigation where they essentially, the nice way of putting it is they essentially pay somebody full-time to dig into every secret you ever had. So they call your previous employers, they talk to your family, they talk to your family's family, friends of your family, friends of your employers, and they basically turn your background inside out to see every little mistake and um, every high point, low point, low point you've ever had uh, will come out during this background investigation. If you've had low times in your life or bad times in your life, that's not necessarily a disqualifier. The disqualifier is if you have had those things and then you're dishonest about it. That's what they're looking for. So, uh, so long as you're forthcoming and there's nothing way outside of the norm and that discovered in that investigation, you'll likely move on past that. It's when people are dishonest and part of that investigation is when it disqualifies you. Uh, once they get done with that, you move into, there's an oral board portion uh, where if you've never done one before, it's quite nerve wracking. They bring you into a room similar to this one. And on one side of the table is a bunch of strangers you don't know, you've never met at various levels of rank uh, within our agency and they're wearing a uniform like this and if you've never seen it before most of these people are you know square draw jawed straight laced like you know Preston best kind of thing asking you a lot of the same questions about where have you been what have you done in your life and they evaluate literally every word in your response uh, to see how do you talk to people how do you formulate sentences on the spot how do you uh, how are you able to accurately and honestly recall certain situations that they ask you about, uh, either related to your background or to how your fit is as an employee here. Uh, it's very nerve wracking and it can last anywhere from you know, 30 minutes to an hour and a half uh, of just getting grilled by these complete strangers. Uh, so that's fun. Um, once you get done with that, there's a the computer voice stress analyzer test, AKA the lie detector, where they take your background packet everything you wrote about yourself and everything they found out about you in this extensive background investigation and they put you on a lie detector machine and ask you about it to see if you're telling the truth. Uh, if you are able to show that there's no deception on that portion then you move on to the next step uh, which is there's a medical evaluation. Uh, you do have to be uh, fairly physical, physically fit to be a deputy sheriff uh, so they check uh, everything about you. You do some blood work, um, you do a chest x-ray, uh, they do a heart test, um, a breathing test, uh, check all your medical records to make sure that you don't have any ailments or anything that will preclude you from safely being a deputy sheriff. Uh, the final step is a psychological exam uh, where you sit and do an 850 question written test uh, in addition to a uh, somewhat of an interview with a forensic psychologist uh, who dives into your past and makes sure that you don't have any um, mental health conditions or uh, psychological behaviors that would preclude you from being a, a safe deputy sheriff and then also be able to um, have those interpersonal skills to do the job because this entire job is, I don't care where you work, it's the jail or patrol or investigations, this entire job is about working with and talking to people. 
So if you have certain um, psychological issues or disorders that preclude you from doing that, then you're not necessarily a good fit for the job. Uh, and then finally, you get hired in. And once you get hired in, you, uh, you stand up in front of a group. It's your peers, it's your family, it's the community. You swear an oath uh, to them, uh, an oath of conduct, essentially, that uh, you'll agree to do certain things and not violate certain rules. And uh, then the sheriff or whoever you pick, they pin your badge on, you start work. Uh, there is a formalized process in order to become a deputy sheriff where you are required to obtain essentially a license to be a police officer in Nevada, and it's called the Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission, or POST, and where you have to obtain your basic POST certificate. And this is uh, approximately 500 hours of training in all kinds of different fields. So you go to a college-like environment where you do uh, lecture-based training, you do scenario-based training, you do physical fitness every day, um, and you learn about criminal law in Nevada, you learn about a little bit about civil law in Nevada, you learn about use of force, uh, ethics, uh, you learn about some basics into dealing with persons who are mentally ill, as that is a new prevalent problem in law, in law enforcement that we have to be trained for. Uh, you learn defensive driving, you learn defensive tactics, you learn how to use a firearm, uh, you learn basic crime lab, uh, crime scene type techniques like fingerprinting, uh, you learn about interview interrogation, and that throughout that process every week you are evaluated and you could be dropped from that process at any time for either not rising to the standard of the academy or for conduct issues while you're in the academy. Uh, and we have you know people that they wash out because of alcohol problems or they get in a fight with another cadet or something comes up in their background that gets discovered while you're in the academy and you may be excused. Uh, and then once you graduate from that, you are licensed to be a police officer in Nevada so long as you continue your ongoing training uh, year to year, what's called in-service training. And what all that means is post and our agency, they have a certain amount of hours and a certain amount of disciplines that they have to provide training for you on every single year in order for you to continue to be licensed to be a police officer in the state. To be a law enforcement officer, you obviously have to want to help people. So anytime you can go and encounter somebody when they're having their worst day and make it better, that is the best part of this job. Um, for me, I love coming into schools, you know, uh, encountering the youth, whether that be pull over and play ball for a little while, uh, let them see the dog. That's what makes it worth it to me, you know, um, guiding the youth and helping people. But on the other side, I love, I love putting the bad guys in jail. When somebody's out there victimizing innocent people and I get to take that person and, and get them off the streets, that's what, I, you know, I, I love that. And um, so that is definitely the pros of the, of, of the job. The best part about law enforcement to me and my wife is the rest of the story. I've been doing this all my adult life and understanding the rest of the story of what you read in the newspaper fascinates me. So one of the best things about being a police officer in Carson City is seeing how sometimes when you go to a certain call or you receive a certain call and you're able to make a positive impact on that outcome. You're able to help somebody out and really make a difference in that person's life. And sometimes it's just by being able to provide resources or sometimes it's just by being in there and listening to someone. So I think the most beneficial thing and the most positive thing for us is just being able to see some of the positive impacts we've made in someone's life. So the best part about the job on patrol was every day was different. Every single day was different. You may conduct a traffic stop, but it'll be different than the one you just did five minutes ago. So everything's different. And that's what I loved about the job because you never have a day like yesterday. It's always different. And, the, and that's nice. And it's rewarding because sometimes you're dealing with bad people and sometimes you're dealing with good people. And there was always that nice balance, the, the adrenaline rush to go after the bad guys and then helping somebody that really needs help. And that was nice.